Hi, I'm Rob Cosm. Welcome to my shop. Power jointer is a very effective tool. Also can be dangerous. You need good push blocks. I've had this one for 30 plus years. Time to make another one. Going to walk you through it. Just a couple of scraps of wood. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. In case you're not familiar with woodworking machinery, this is called a jointer, and it's probably second most important tool in the shop. Um, it can be very dangerous. You've got a cutter head that's spinning at a lot of RPM, removing a fair bit of material, and you need to use this machine with lots of control. This is where the push blocks come in, but just real quick on the function. It has an in-feed table and an out-feed table. They should always be parallel to one another. The out-feed table is set to be at the same height as the top of the cutting circle. The in-feed table sits lower, and as the board passes over the cutter head, whatever gets removed by the cutter head gets picked up by the outfeed table so you're never in a rocking situation. That new surface will automatically sit flat on this one. If you're using it to joint an edge, you're going to keep it tight to the fence and tight to the table, but I'm going to focus just on face jointing. So these are some of the blocks that have been kicking around in my shop. I think I got my original inspiration from this, which is actually a grouting tool but there's what it is, and that's what it looks like. I'm gonna make it a little bit better since this one has had its life expire. These ones I really don't like because I find them a little bit too short. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But if I'm going to face joint to make it flat, face of a board, I want one back here that's putting pressure on this end, also has a cleat right there so that I can push forward effectively, and one on the front that'll keep the pressure down on that side of the board as well. And there's lots to know about using a jointer and applying the pressure in the right spots in order to get accurate results. That's another video. We're gonna focus just on the push block. We're gonna do two of them and then we'll get started. I like the push block to be large enough that it's got a little bit of mass that I think it works in my favor. So in other words, I'm comparing this one to this one. This one, if anything ever happened that the board kicked out, there's not a whole lot between me and that cutter head. This one, at least you've got a little more surface area. I just feel a little more confident with this one. So let's copy this one. All right, so we're just gonna use some scraps around here. This is gonna be out of three quarter plywood. We're gonna make two of them and they're 12 inches long. So I'm gonna have two pieces that are 12 inches. And I like the width and uh, well, I, you want it to be somewhat stable. So if it was half of that, you just wouldn't have as much stability. That's the reason why I like this. I think that's, it is four inches. Four inches and it's three quarter ply. Now our handle, and that's gonna be made out of three quarter. It can be softwood or hardwood. I'm gonna to try to find some hardwood. And that piece is 10 and a half inches. So we're gonna need two of those, 10 and a half. And the height is three and a quarter and it's three quarter solid. And then on one of them, we need a little cleat in the back and that is going to be four inches long by seven eighths of an inch. And we don't want it to be too uh, thick simply because uh, that'll limit the size of wood, or the thickness of material that you can run over your jointer. So this one is a quarter of an inch and that's probably plenty. Now we'll just try to trace. Nothing uh, really particular about this. Just something you want to be able to hold on to. I actually had enough scrap there to make three, so.
I'm just I have a disc sander, so I'm going to use it just to smooth those edges out a little bit. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our newsletter has subscriber-only content, monthly discount on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. If you have a spindle sander, this has to be an oscillating one. It goes up and down. Nice to just go in there and clean that inside corner. This would be easier in a router table, but if you don't have one, just clamp it in place. I just mean moving it a few times. I'm using a uh, 3 8 inch bit, so it'll give me a nice round over. Just makes it easier on the hands. Depending on how smooth the router surface finish is, you may need to sand it, but this is actually fine. Now, I'm going to more than just glue this, but I'm going to glue it first, and that'll hold it in place, and then I can apply some fasteners once the glue is set. And I'm just going to center that, probably have it a little toward the back end as opposed to the front. I'm just eyeballing that for center. Put that in place and all I need is one clamp. Okay, once that sets up, we'll go in there and Apply some other fasteners. Okay, well this second one is drying. We'll finish this one off. So I'm going to put a couple of screws in there. I'm just going to mark where they need to go. Want that to be in the center. Now you want to countersink those deep enough that they don't become a risk to the jointer. And I'm going to use number eight by inch and three quarter. Okay, now to finish this one off, which is the one I'll use on the front, I'm going to put some sandpaper on here. Now this is a self-adhesive uh, paper made by Porter Cable. If you don't have that, you can always just glue on regular paper. But to make it stick a little bit better, I'm going to go in and just plane this surface a little bit. It's relatively rough being exterior grade paper, or exterior grade plywood.
Okay, now that'll stick a little bit better with a little bit of clamping pressure on it. And we'll leave that in the clamps while we're working on this next one. Okay, I prepared this one the same way. This is the back one. So I put the screws in, I planed it so the paper will stick a little bit better. But now I'm gonna clamp on, I'll put it back here. I'm gonna clamp on that little cleat. I'll glue it and clamp it. And then once the uh, glue is dry, we'll secure it with some dowels. Just to give it a little more um, strength from breaking off. Just hold that for a second, let it set, then we'll put the clamps on it and it won't be as likely to move. Okay, now probably doesn't need it, but I would prefer to have a little extra support. So I'm gonna put two 5 16 dowels. I'll put one there, and one there. They don't need to go all the way through. I don't want them to go all the way through into my bench, so I'll put a piece of masking tape. That's good. I think that's a tight enough fit. We don't even need to put any glue. Whatever, drill that crooked. Now, last step on this one is to put some paper on there. Just a bit of sandpaper to knock off those sharp edges. Based on the last one, I should get at least another 30 years out of these. Makes it safe, makes it a lot more effective, and also makes it more accurate. There you go. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.